Hello everyone! Uh, you've seen how much trouble everyone gave uh, Bobby Fischer during the 1959 Candidates Tournament with the Carl Kahn. Uh, so while I will be returning to the 1959 uh, Candidates Tournament, I decided to show you one game played 11 years after that tournament. Uh, this is the 1970 match USSR against the rest of the world. So the Soviets really brought uh, their entire army, uh, you know, out of the 10 players that actually played. Uh, five of them were world, former world champions and uh, on board one was uh, reigning world champion Boris Pasky. And uh, aside from those five players, they had, um, uh, they had Taimanov, Korchnoi, uh, they had Paul Keres, uh, you know, uh, a lot of extremely, extremely strong players. Uh, you can imagine that uh, Leonid Stein and David Bronstein were only the reserves. And uh, this is a game uh, between Bobby Fischer and Tigran Petrosian. And uh, in those days, I mean, in those days, in, in that match, uh, Fischer was actually playing board two. Board one was uh, Bent Larsen. Uh, as at that time, Bent, Bent Larsen claimed that he was stronger than Fischer and uh, that he would definitely uh, beat Fischer in if they ever played a match. Uh, but as you all know, in their 1971 candidates match, uh, Fischer kind kind of annihilated Larsen with a result of six to zero. Uh, but okay, uh, and uh, in this match, Larson actually did pretty good on board one. I mean, excellent. He he played a one and a half to one and a half uh, against uh, Boris Pasky, reigning world champion. And uh, uh, the third game, uh, Larson actually uh, defeated Spassky, so Spassky didn't play game number four. Game game number four was played uh, by Leonid Stein, and uh, Larson also beat Leonid Stein. So he actually had a great performance on board one. Uh, but uh, this is the game I wanted to show you, Fischer versus Petrosian, as Petrosian once again employs uh, the Karo Khan against Fischer. Uh, but this time it's uh, it's not the 1959 Fischer, this is the 1970 Fischer. Uh, so Bobby goes for e4, of course, and we have c6. d4, d5, the Karo Khan defense, and here we have the immediate e captures on d5, the exchange variation. Uh, c captures on d5 and bishop to d3. Knight to c6, c3 now defending the d4 pawn, uh, knight to f6 and bishop to f4, this is called the Rubinstein variation of the exchange Karo Khan. Uh, bishop to g4 and here, what do you do here? Well, there are obviously a couple of options, you could go knight f3, you could go knight e2, you could move the queen. Uh, Fischer plays uh, queen to b3, going after the b7 pawn. Uh, Petrosian defends this with knight to a5, uh, we have queen to a4 check, uh, now bishop to d7 attacking the queen and bishop uh, queen back to c2. Now it's very important to see what Fischer did here. Uh, when Petrosian played this bishop to g4 move, Fischer could have immediately played queen to c2. Uh, but if he immediately played queen to c2, as you can see, Petrosian would have a nice bishop on g4. He would have a very nice knight on c6. Uh, but if you look at the position that actually happened in the game due to Fischer playing queen to b3 first, then you have this position. Now there's a bishop on d7 kind of blocking Petrosian's development, and also this knight is awkwardly placed on a5. So, Fischer's queen did end up on c2, but Petrosian's pieces aren't so active. Uh, e6, uh, we have knight to f3, queen to b6 now, and uh, a4. Uh, now, if you, if you decide to do something like knight to b3, it doesn't really hurt white, as you can always go rook to a2, and now the knight doesn't really have any purpose there. So, after a4, uh, we have rook to c8, and now uh, we have knight to d2. Fischer doesn't allow Petrosian to jam this knight to c4. Uh, knight back to c6, and now queen to b1. Uh, Fischer doesn't want to allow, while the queen is on c2, uh, any knight captures on d4 ideas, maybe in the future. Uh, we have knight to h5 attacking the bishop, bishop to e3, and h6 now. Uh, knight to e5, knight to f6, and h3. Uh, bishop to d6, and we have castles by Fischer. And here Petrosian could definitely castle, it's uh, it's definitely an option, but he decides to go king to f8. Uh, f4 by Fischer, and bishop to e8 now. Uh, we have bishop to f2, and now queen to c7. Uh, bishop back to h4, uh, and now knight to g8. Knight to h5 probably was, was a was an idea that was a little bit better, uh, but he decides to go knight to g8, and here Fischer goes for the immediate f5. And uh, it, it seems like an interesting idea, of course the king is stuck on f8, uh, you know, the bishop is kind of blocking it on the e-file, the knight is kind of blocking it on the g-file, so definitely you want to open up the f-file as you have a nicely placed rook on f1. And, uh, okay, Petrosian goes for it, knight, uh, knight captures on e5, we have d captures on e5, and bishop captures on e5. 
Uh, and of course f captures on e6. So how do you defend here? Uh, well, either you will allow white to capture the f7 pawn, followed by bishop captures, uh, or you might want to play f6, defending like this in the game, Petrosian decided to go for bishop to f6. Uh, e captures on f7, bishop captures on f7, and now knight to f3. Uh, developing the knight, also defending the bishop on h4. Uh, bishop captures, knight captures, and now knight to f6. Uh, we have knight to g6. Uh, this knight to f6 was a, was a much needed move as knight to g6 immediately uh, would uh, check the king and fork the rook as the bishop on f7 is pinned. So knight to f6, but knight to g6 either way. Uh, bishop captures, bishop captures, and uh, we have king to e7. Uh, bishop to h, uh, sorry, queen to f5 now, uh, and we have king to d8. So Petrosian really tries to do a nice king walk. Uh, may maybe at some point he can even move the queen and get his king by c7 to b8, but uh, we'll see. Uh, rook, rook a to e1. Fischer develops his final rook, and uh, now he's ready, ready for some action. Uh, queen to c5. Uh, this comes with check, king to h1, and now rook to f8. And here we have queen to e5. And you can already see that there's a lot of pressure uh, for black in this position. If this queen ever moves from this diagonal, uh, then queen to e7 will be checkmate. So Petrosian plays rook to c7 to guard the e7 square one more time. And perhaps he can get his king to safety via c8 and v8. Uh, but Fischer pushes b4. And now, uh, unfortunately, you can't capture the c3 pawn if you capture queen d6 check and uh, you lose the rook on f8. So after b4, queen to c6, but now comes c4. And again, you face the same problem. If queen captures, then queen to d6 check picks up the rook on f8. Uh, and if you play something like rook to d7 to try and avoid this, then you get queen to b8 check. Uh, queen to c8 and now queen captures on a7. And again, what, what do you do here? Uh, if queen to c7, then you simply capture the pawn, and now if you decide to capture it, uh, if you don't capture it, you really don't have a move to play here. Uh, you don't, you can't move the knight. It's pinned. The rook, on, the rook here is undefended. You can never go uh, rook to e8 to an open file. So there really aren't any moves black can play here. Uh, if you capture, you get rook to c1, and it's game over. The queen doesn't really have anywhere to go. Uh, you have to go queen d7, but now comes queen to b6 check, and it's game over. King to e7. Now comes rook e1. And uh, you're getting checkmated, whatever you do. The king is all uh, all locked out. Uh, you have to first give up your, your knight with knight e4, then your rook with rook e5, and then finally queen e6, and th this will lead to checkmate. So after this c4 move, uh, it's really really hard to defend. Uh, Petrosin, Petrosin tried c d captures on c4. Uh, but now comes uh, bishop to f5, first preventing the king from escaping via c8. Uh, we have rook to f7 and here rook to d1 check. Uh, rook f to d7 blocking uh, and now comes of course bishop captures, rook captures and here queen to b8 check. Uh, king to e7 and now rook d to e1 and uh, it was in this position that uh, Fischer, that uh, Petrosian resigned the game. <coughs> uh, let me just mention after this uh, queen to b8 move, Petrosian did go for king to e7. Uh, but if you block it, for example, with queen to c8, uh, then you get rook captures on d7. Knight captures and now queen to d6. Uh, the threat is rook to f8 checkmate, as the knight is pinned on d7. So if you decide to go king e8, now you get queen e6 check. King moves back and now comes rook f4, uh, going for the c4 pawn. After you play queen to c6, uh, try and do something. Now comes queen to g8 check. And again, if you go to the c-file with the king, rook captures on c4, you lose, you lose the queen. So after king e7, now simply queen captures, king moves, and after another check, uh, you get rook captures on c4. And uh, you can see that white is already up a pawn, uh, up, up the exchange, so that's white can only choose how to win this. Uh, so, uh, like I said, uh, after this queen to b8 check, Petrosian went king e7, and after rook e1, he resigned the game. Uh, because, uh, well, the king doesn't really have anywhere to go. The only square available for the king is f7. If you play king f7, you get queen to e8 checkmate, uh, as the knight, of course, is pinned on f6. And uh, instead, after rook d to e1, if you block with knight to e4, uh, then simply rook to f4 is sufficient to win the game, attacking the pin piece. Uh, 
If you defended rook d4, then comes queen to f8 check, king e6, and now queen captures, and there are simply too many threats here. Uh, let's say your rook is attacked on d4, uh, rook to f6 check, winning the queen as the knight is pinned on e4. So if you move the rook, then again you get rook to f7, and now there are again too many threats here. Uh, whatever black plays, and there's really not all that much you can play. Let's say c3, now comes rook check, king moves, and now rook captures on e4, and again, too many threats, this is just pointless, but just to illustrate, uh, queen here is checkmate, queen here is checkmate, so too many threats. After rook d2 e1, uh, Tigran Petrosin resigned the game, and this is uh, a game from round 1. Uh, out of the 10 players uh, from each team, like I said, the, the Soviets had 10 players and the rest of the world had 10 players. Uh, every player played 4 games uh, against every other player. So this was a game from round 1 and out of the 4 games Fischer played against Petrosian. Uh, he won 2 games and 2 games were drawn, so 3-1 to one in Fischer's favor. And uh, interestingly, uh, he won 1 game with the white pieces and 1 game with the black pieces. And this was the best result. Uh, out of the entire match, uh, Soviets versus the rest of the world in 1970. Uh, the match was played in, in uh, Belgrade, and uh, interestingly, uh, yeah, Bobby Fischer did have the best score out of the entire match, but uh, there was another player who had uh, three, uh, three points out of four games, uh, and that was Paul Karras, who, who faced uh, Borislav Ivkov, and uh, he also had two wins and two draws against Ivkov, but uh, both, both of uh, Karras' wins were with the white pieces. So a very interesting uh, match and, uh, you know, a lot of interesting games were played. I will put uh, a link in the description below where you can read something more about this match if you're interested. And I will put a list of all the players that participated in, in this match. And uh, since you guys lo love photos so much, uh, I prepared a photo here. Uh, here you can see... That's Fischer playing against Petrosian, Fischer with the white pieces, that's that's actually a photo from this tournament. So I, I can't really tell from the position on the board, is it actually this game, but you know, Fischer had uh, the white pieces in two games. So there's like a 50% shot that it's actually from this game I just showed. Uh, you know, we can always pretend it is just so we enjoy it more. So yeah, uh, that's the game, I do hope you enjoyed it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon.